and welcome to our Lake Point Kids Online Family Experience. I'm Ms. Rachel and I'm happy you're tuning in. Are you just about ready to celebrate a very special day? No, 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 not the Super Bowl. That's not what I'm talking about. I know it takes place today, but this thing has nothing to do with football. I'm talking about Valentine's Day. It's tomorrow. And here to get you ready for it is a little game. See if you can guess what is hiding behind all the hearts. hiding behind the hearts. Here's a hint, it's what we've been studying this month. Well, we describe it as this. Compassion is caring enough to do something about someone else's need. I'll count to three and then we'll say it together. One, two, three. Compassion is caring enough to do something about someone else's need. It's one word with two parts to its meaning, caring and doing. It's a word used a lot in the New Testament when talking about Jesus and how he would care about the people he saw and meet and he would do something to help them. But compassion is also a theme throughout the entire Bible. Just check out what our verse of the month found in the Old Testament has to say. The Lord has shown you what is good. He has told you what he requires of you. You must act with justice. You must love to show mercy. And you must be humble as you live in the sight of your God. Micah 6 verse 8, Nerve. 
those are some big words in there. But basically, God is telling us that he's shown us and told us what he wants us to do. To do what is right, to care and show compassion to others, and don't make it all about yourself. All right, now let's rehearse the verse. The Lord has shown you what is good. He has told you what he requires of you. You must act with justice. You must love to show mercy. And you must be humble as you live in the sight of your God. Micah 6, verse 8, Nerve. All right, stand up to your feet. In honor of all the snow we've had, let's pretend we are in the snow right now. So let's say a verse while pretending to throw snowballs. Go. The Lord has shown you what is good. He has told you what he requires of you. You must act with justice. You must love to show mercy. And you must be humble as you live in the sight of your God. Micah 6, verse 8, nerve. Good. Now, let's stay standing but pretend we're making snow angels. Begin. The Lord has shown you what is good. He has told you what he requires of you. You must act with justice. You must love to show mercy. And you must be humble as you live in the sight of your God. Micah 6, verse 8, nerve. Great. Lastly, let's pretend we are shoveling the driveway. Are you ready? Go! The Lord has shown you what is good. He has told you what he requires of you. You must act with justice. You must love to show mercy. And you must be humble as you live in the sight of your God. Micah 6, verse 8, Nerve. Great job, everyone. You can grab a seat. So compassion, what is it again? Well, compassion is caring enough to do something about someone else's need. And our bottom line or our focus point of today is show others they matter. Let's say it together. One, two, three. Show others they matter. What a great opportunity to show others they matter tomorrow for Valentine's Day. But I somehow think we're supposed to do that for more than just one day of the year. Let's go learn more about this right now with the So-and-So Show. Oh yeah, okay, sure. All right, that password. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. There's a window there? Yes! Shh! Uh-huh. Oh, Mr. Beauregard has weeds growing up around his mailbox. That's a violation. Uh-huh. Weeds. What are you doing? Neighborhood watch! Shush! <sighs> oh, <laughs> look at that. Miss Franklin's walking her dog without a leash. Doesn't she know how dangerous that is? Danger. Danger. Oh, what? Longbeard Carl has mismatching flower pots? <laughs> Unbelievable. Mm. <laughs> okay. Who else? Uh, Is that squirrel trying to get into my yard? Oh, 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 oh boy, not on my watch! <laughs> now, squirrel. Hey, 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 you look at me. You look at me right now. Hey, what are you doing? Get back. Oh, no. Oh, 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 no. Ah, ah, oh, ah, oh, oh, no. <laughs> no, get back. Oh, don't look at it. <laughs> That's a strong squirrel. Hey everybody, I'm Brandon. I'm John. You're watching The So-and-So Show. And John is watching his neighbors. Uh -huh. I knew something fishy was going on. What do you see? Well, I see strangers, a moving van, people moving boxes in and out of the house next door. Sounds like you have some new neighbors moving in. New neighbors? Yep. What, what do I do? What do I, what do, I do? This, this is a big deal. Uh, I, you could go meet them after we finish the show. Well, I, just walk over there and talk to them. I have to bring something, do something, you know, be, be a good neighbor. It sounds like you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself. No, I'm not. I just want to be a good neighbor. Oh. Okay, maybe we need someone to help us. Please welcome. Someone who knows stuff. I'm Melinda Manners. I am an expert 
it in all things proper and mannerly. Thank you, Melinda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, this is perfect because I, I, I need help trying to figure out how to welcome my new neighbors into the neighborhood. New neighbors? Mm. Yes. <gasps> Oh, now, this is a big one. Yeah. I'll need to consult my great-great-grandmother's handwritten handbook, the Manners Book of Manners. <laughs> see? It's in here. No. Let's see, maybe it's... Ah, there. No, no. it's not that. Oh, I took the... Here it is. My, my, there are endless things you could do to welcome your new neighbors. Hm. I suggest we start with the most difficult option. Wait, wait, why would we start there? John, my dear, don't you see? Effort says you matter to me. Right. So, it's all here in the handbook. First, research. How many people are moving in? What are their likes, dislikes? Do they have any pets, kids, food allergies, unexpected fears? Well, those are all great questions. Uh, questions for Neighborhood Watch. Isn't it rude to spy on your neighbors? Of course. <laughs> Aren't you spying on them now? <laughs> Oh, no. It's important to know the facts in order to do the very best acts. What do you see, John? Let's see. Uh, one adult, three children, two dogs. One soccer ball, two flower pots. Ooh, a very large bag of bird seed. <laughs> nice work, John. You know what this calls for. No idea. A welcome to the neighborhood flower pot. You have everything you need here to make a beautiful and thoughtful welcome to the neighborhood flower pot. You will each create your flower pot and then you must be able to carry it around the room on your head. Why do we need to carry them on our head? Good posture, young man, is essential to a mannerly first impression. A bad first impression is as bad as sour milk. If you want to be impressive, walk as smooth as silk. Oh, okay. You have five minutes to decorate and go. Oh. Uh, we going? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, you can just put the flowers in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't forget to add the candy. Oh, right. Oh, I Save thought this was for me. Candy? No. Butter goes on yes, the flower. So birds are really attracted to the peanut butter and the seed holds it on. Nice. Very nice. Yes. You're just... Oh, you are very good at this. You have done this before, sir, so I'm sure. Yes. Beautiful work. Yes. Now to practice carrying them over to the new neighbors. Star wipe. Shoulders back, head high, knees slightly bent, and walking. Yes. Come on, come on. Oh, good. Balance, balance, oh. breathing come in on, and out, on. staying calm. Ow. You know, I, I think John can be a good neighbor if he's not balancing something on his head. No, no, I have to walk like silk. We might be missing the point here. True, it's not manly to get so upset. I am not upset! You are the... It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hello, hello. Hey, Kellen. What are we talking about today, Kellen? Great question. Today we're talking about a time that Jesus talked to a Samaritan woman at a well in Samaria. That's right. And what better way to learn about this historic moment than to hear from the woman herself? Uh, hello? Hello. And welcome to Behind the Bible.
Jesus and his disciples were traveling through Samaria. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down at a well while his disciples went into town to buy food. While he was sitting there, a Samaritan woman came to draw water from the well. It was the middle of the day, and he was just sitting there by himself. All I knew about him is that he was Jewish, and Jews did not talk to Samaritans. Plus, I'm not exactly the person people liked to talk to. Back then, most people just ignored me or were mean to me, so I wasn't going to say anything. Just to be clear, that was not the real woman from Samaria that Jesus talked to. This happened a long time ago, before cameras were invented. I think the people watching already know that. I know. I just want to make sure. Can you let me do my job, please? Oh, sure. Jesus asked the woman if she would give him a drink. Of course I was surprised when he asked. I was surprised he was even talking to me. I asked him how he could ask me for a drink when he was a Jew and I was a Samaritan woman. And he said, and I, I'll never forget this. He said, you don't know who is asking you for a drink. If you did, you would have asked him. He would have given you living water. That sounds crazy, right? I mean, how could I ask him for a drink? He didn't even have anything to get water with. And who's ever heard of living water? Jesus told her, everyone who drinks the water from the well will get thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give will never get thirsty. When the woman asked Jesus for this living water, he told her to go get her husband. But, but Jesus knew that she had no husband. In fact, Jesus knew everything about her. That's right. I know. It blew my mind, you know. How could a stranger know all about my past? He knew all the mistakes I'd made, all my sins, but he was so kind about it. He wasn't embarrassed or mad or... He just saw me for who I was and knew me. That's when I realized he was no ordinary man. Jesus told her the truth about himself, that he was the Messiah the savior of the world that the people had been waiting for. And that's when his disciples returned from getting food. Yeah, we were surprised to see him talking to a Samaritan woman, but we didn't say anything. Jesus was always surprising us with who he talked to. He cared about everybody. There wasn't a single person he thought of as not worth his time or attention. <sighs> I guess we should all be like that, huh? When I found out I was talking to the Messiah, I could barely believe it. I left my water jar. Cannot believe I did that. And I ran into town just shouting at people, come see a man who told me everything I've ever done. Could this be the Messiah? It was amazing. And I think people came to see him in part just because of how excited I was. They wanted to see for themselves what I was talking about. It was like the whole town came up to see Jesus. They begged him to stay with them, so we stayed there for two days. And so many people believed in him. They believed in Jesus as the savior of the world. It was incredible. That day changed me. He changed me. I just, I won't ever be the same again. Jesus showed the woman who he really was, the savior of the world. And because of her response to him, many people in her town met him and believed in him too. This has been Behind the Bible. That was really awesome. That was a great narration. Yes, I know. Okay. Hey, what did you guys think? Uh, that was great. Yeah, Jesus changed that woman's life. And saved her city. Yep. Jesus showed this overlooked woman that she mattered. And she responded by sharing the good news with everyone she knew. It's important to remember that no matter who you are, where you're from, or what you've done, we still matter to Jesus. Thanks, Kellen. You betcha. Wow. So Jesus is amazing at showing people that he cares for them. Yeah. Everyone matters to him. Oh, oh. Reveal the question. <laughs> who matters to you? Yeah. Your parents, friends, a new neighbor, perhaps? Yeah, we all have people in our lives who matter to us, and... There are lots of different ways we can show them that they matter. Yeah, and it's really important to show them because 
people who matter to you might not know it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you can show people they matter by telling them or by doing something kind for them. Yeah, even just making time to talk to someone like Jesus did can, can make their day. Mm -hmm. Think about that, and we'll see you next time. I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and this was the So-and-So Show! This is a fish from 1948. It smells like cat litter, which is not great. This is a dog bone, halfway chewed. I don't have a dog, so this one's for you. Everybody likes freshly baked goods. Nothing says manners like an oven full of foods. The manners, but the manners, the manners, but the manners, the manners, but the manners, but the manners, 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 bring it home, boys. The woman from our story had probably been overlooked for most of her life, partly because of the choices she had made, and partly because of where she was born in Samaria. But Jesus didn't overlook her; he truly saw her, and by talking with her, he showed her that she really mattered. She was invisible to Jesus, and we should treat people like they matter too, because they do. God made them and God loves them. Sometimes people can feel forgotten or overlooked. So make a point to pay attention to others and maybe ask them about their day, or perhaps introduce yourself to someone who you haven't met yet, or help someone without being asked, or even just say thank you for what that person has done. Be on the lookout for people who might feel invisible, like the new student at school, or that shy cousin at the family gathering, or someone who perhaps seems a little bit different. Every single person matters to Jesus, and so if we are going to follow him, people should matter to us too. It's time to bring it home now with our small group time, so along with your parent, listen to today's instructions. First off, talk about a time where you felt overlooked or forgotten or ignored. How did that make you feel? Now think about someone you know who may feel overlooked, forgotten, or ignored. How do you think they feel? Do you think Jesus wants them to feel that way? And what can you do about it? All right, now press pause, complete the activity, and then come back for the second set of instructions. Now, I want you to take time to create a Valentine for someone who you think might feel overlooked sometimes. You don't even have to sign your name on it, but I encourage you to write something on it like, thanks for all you do, or I'm glad you're in our class, or Jesus loves you. Then pass along to more to that person and make their day by reminding them that they really matter. Parents, now's the time to either scan the QR code on the screen or head over to the Lakepoint app to fill out our online connection card. Signing our guest book lets us know who is watching and helps us stay connected to you. It also allows you to sign up for our latest Lakepoint initiatives and opportunities. So friends, while your parents are busy doing that, why don't you go and grab a paper and pencil and see how many hearts you can draw in the next 60 seconds. Just a reminder that you can go back and watch your favorite Lake Point Kids online family experiences on our YouTube channel or on our Lake Point app in the family resources section. Friends, I'm so glad you tuned in today. I'll see you again next week, same time, same place. Remember, show others they matter. 